Welcome to the UK OCR Community Podcast, presented by Obstacle Racing Media. Each episode, we'll be talking to race directors, elite runners, weekend warriors, and frankly, anyone else from the UK OCR scene that will talk to us. Here is your host, Alan, aka Muddy Duck. Anywhere in Chicken South. The bloody scene is bloody sad. The bloody news is bloody bad. Bloody... Greetings, friends, acquaintances, and anyone else just happened to listen in. Welcome to another edition of the UK OCR podcast. How's everyone's week been? Normally, I record these intros on a Saturday or a Sunday. Usually on a Sunday, 99% on a Sunday. But today, it's only Friday. <laughs> Why is it Friday when recording on a Friday? Because next week is my big race. Yeah, next week is, is Overload's Farmyard Jam. So, I'm not going to be here at weekend. So, I'm recording this and I'm going to schedule it all. Squall out on Monday, so you're all there. Um, and everything else. So, yeah, I'm not going to be here. I'm... I'm building a car. I'm, I'll, I, it's one of my. I look forward to it so much. I do it twice a year, as you probably some of you know. Not everyone probably knows, but twice a year, I go down. Me, me and my little team. Um, there's usually four of us down there. We get all the obstacles out, um, a storage, and we put them all up. This one's going to be a bit different. You know, normally I'm, I'm there for, you know, nearly two weeks sometimes building and making sure it's all right. But we're not having all the obstacles out, so. There's only about 50% of the obstacles that were normally out, and they're all going to be in a line. So I'm not going to be taking them everywhere and, and that like. They're literally going to be in a line because the Farmyard Jam, if you don't know about it, it's 5k on the hour, every hour. So you run 5k, you get back to the start, you run another 5k, you're back to the start. But as you get back to the start, the last 250 metres is going to be just obstacle, obstacle, obstacle. It might be less than 250 metres, I haven't decided yet, but it's going to be around about 250 metres. There's going to be crawls, there's going to be climbs, there's going to be walls, um, fuel carriers, things like that, just to test every muscle in your body. Because after you run 5k, you know, you need a bit of, the, the muscles need to be tested. And if you don't want to the obstacle course, you can just go and run another k. So yeah, it's, um, but you've got to be back on the start for the next hour. So it's, it's really going to be different in terms of the whole mindset, a bit like, a, you know, the backyard ultras, and it can go on for up to two days. So yeah, so I've booked the venue for 48 hours for racing um, and see how it goes. Um, if you're free, you're in Derby, pop over on Bank Holiday Friday, 3rd of June. It starts at 12 o'clock um, and it's just going to keep on going until um, there's only one person left and they've either got to quit at 24 hours or the, or whenever they want. But yeah, it's going through the night and everything. It's going to be really, really tough for people. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. So... This week's and next week's going to be scheduled because um, I'm not going to be available to the intros and outros. I've got to still got to do a bit of editing as well for um, UKHXR and our Swifter half. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, can't wait. Yeah. So, yeah, what have I got this week? Um, let's get on to it. Naomi Mitchell. If you don't know Naomi, she, she's from, oh, from Scotland. Um, not going to say much more than she, she's from Scotland um, originally. And... She's, she's making a bit of a name herself in the OCR world. So we thought, let's get her on. Let's get a story. She's got a, she's a really good story to tell. Um, you know, many of us can like look at it and say, yeah, you know, I, I can associate with that. You know, I can see that. Um, she's been through some, some tough times. She's coming out the other side. And, and she tells her story um, and what the plan is. Um, so have a listen. Um, and I'll speak to you afterwards. I'm not sure how people are going to understand us here today, Naomi, because... Me being from Yorkshire, you you being from Scotland, you know this is not <laughs> this is not really a match made in heaven for um, our southern friends, is it? <laughs> no, not really. I remember Will; uh, he got a bit of a shock and went, "Oh, you're Scottish." <laughs> Do you know you that you not Will's not the only person. So my research was searching for you. Know, we're going to come a little bit into Athlinks a little bit because you've got a great Athlinks. But there's another Naomi Mitchell on Athlinks, and she's like super good and I mean you're good yeah you you're in the top category in OCR but we're talking about this athlete is top category in like the world you know she's like running races she's she's right up there you know first second against some really amazing athletes and we were like is she that good <laughs> um, and then we realized you're from America and not from the UK <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so we do research on people and we don't always get it right but i was thinking oh my god i've got someone right up there in the, you know we're talking like um 
oh God, I'm top, top of my head, I'm thinking like Elliot Kipchoge, you know, Elliot Kipchoge standards and that, and um, or close to them level. Yeah, I know. Like an Olympian. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. <laughs> um, oh no, thanks for coming on to the podcast. I mean, what a story you've got, because, and I'm going to touch straight on, first of all, you've got twins, Jay and Aston. Yes. Yeah. And you were a young mum. I am, yes. I had them when I was 17. Yeah, so you start off quite early with children. You know, most people wait until, well, I say quite early. I come from Barnsley, yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around and say it straight. They start at 15 in Barnsley, not 17. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you're a late, you late bloomer from Barnsley, but you're from Scotland, so you're a, of, um, a, a young mum. And and you had a bit of a, a were they premature? Because they were very, very small. They were. So they were uh, seven and a half weeks early, and they were four pounds, four and five pounds. Oh, that must have been frightening for you at that time. Yeah, it was pretty difficult. Um, I had something called twin to twin transfusion syndrome as well, which meant that either one of them wasn't going to make it through the pregnancy or the other one wasn't going to make it through the birth. So we never knew whether I was going to come home with one baby, two babies or even any babies at all. Um, so the pregnancy was really difficult. Oh, that must have been that must have been weighed, weighed heavily on you. You know, I, I can't imagine that. I, my eldest boy now, bless him, is, is 28 now. And we, we lived in Brighton at the time. Um, well, we moved into Eastbourne and he, he was diagnosed prior to being born with a, a heart condition. And we were very much, we didn't know what, what was going to happen when he was born. Looking when we were born, he was, he was in Guy's Hospital um, and things like that. And, you know, he's 28 now, now bless him. How long were, they in, how long were yours in hospital? for? So Lewis mine was in hospital about four months. Yeah, well, they were actually only in for what I think it was about five or six weeks. So they weren't in too long. Um, but unfortunately, we did have some issues when we got home, uh, which resulted in Aston having to be um, rushed to surgery for like hernias. And for the first, I'd say, year and a half of their life, we were constantly in and out of hospitals. Um, again, we had hearts, um, heart surgeons and in that involved as well as Jay had a bit of a heart issue. Uh, but thankfully, as he got older, he kind of grew out of that. So he didn't need any surgery in the end. But it was for the first year and a half, it was very heavy going, constantly at appointments and scans and whatnot. Oh, wow. Wow. And I mean, you must be so proud of now. Are they 10? I'm, I'm looking at your Instagram. I'm saying they're 10 year old now. They will be 10 in July. Right. So now everyone knows your age. <laughs> I'm going to shout it out. The best organisation to really done that, Alan. That was a bad thing to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, but the, they're heavily into OCR. Did you get them into OCR with you? I think because they, they want to be like mum and, and follow you? They are, actually. Um, so it wouldn't have been until, I'd say, just before lockdown that they really started getting into OCR. Um, I took them along to a fun run called Tartan Warrior. And from there, they absolutely loved it. And then it kind of got to a point that they would just do it for a bit of fun. And then they said, Mom, we really want to go competitive. Um, but Spartan only changed the age um, from 10 to 9. Was it for Spartan just passed? Yeah. So it was that one that was their first competitive race as they were only able to do the open races up until then. So yeah, they love it. They've got their own coach as well. They're coached by Sean from Team Grit. Um, so yeah, they are, they're flying through it. Aston gives me a run for my money now. So <laughs> <laughs> I've now got to try and keep up with him. I and mean, Jay, he's the opposite. He's, uh, he's like me. He's more a strength based child more than a runner. Um, and he's fairly starting to, to lift some amount of weight as well, obviously safely. Um, but no, it's it's lovely to see them getting involved with it. And yeah, I mean, proud mum. Yeah, I, I would definitely say proud mum. I'd be super proud. And am I right in saying they, they went down to meet Ryan Atkins down at Knox Training Do? They did, yes. Uh, they really, really look up to him. So they were over the moon to get to meet him. What, what was that like? So. Russ, what was it like? Did you go down yourself to train and get some tips from him, or was it, or was it like just a weekend thing with with the family? How how did you come around going down there? So I seen it advertised on Instagram, and I got in contact with Graham, 
um, right. who is part of Knox. He's he's the uh, mindset coach for Knox. And um, I says to him, I was like, look, I'm really interested in coming down. Like, I'd, are the twins allowed to come? So he got back. He's like, yeah, twins can easily come as well. Um, if they if they want, they can get involved with the, the training side of it as well, which was a huge bonus. Um, so we just kind of went down for the day and the twins took on the training as well, alongside the adults, really. And they absolutely loved it. I think they showed some of us adults how it's done, to be fair. <laughs> I love when I see kids on things like monkey bars and rings and rigs and that because they just don't have no fear. They just no. it's just natural to them, isn't it? Just go from one side to the other and and use their own momentum. Yeah, exactly. It's like all the adults were getting offered to to uh, do a couple of the obstacles, and we were all kind of standing back, whereas the twins were like, "We'll do it," and showing us how <laughs> it was done. So. Yeah, it was really nice. They were over the moon to meet Ryan because they really look up to him. Um, but they've made a request that they want Lindsay Webster there next time. <laughs> yeah, I can get that. You know, young boys. Uh, yeah, let's get let's get the pretty one of the two over yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> not that um, Ryan, if you're listening, not that you're not pretty. You know, you are. I like your hair. Um, I always tell him I like his hair when I speak to him. Um, <laughs> Let's go back to you, Alicia. So before you had um, Jane Aston, was you into sports? Were you a sporty person at school? I wasn't actually, no. Um, I didn't have much interest in fitness, um, whereas my dad actually, he was an ex-bodybuilder, so I kind of had been, I, I grew up in like a gym environment, but I wasn't overly keen on fitness. It wasn't until after I had the twins that... I found a love for fitness, um, obviously with the weight gain after having them, uh, I was quite self-conscious and I knew that I had to do something to, to make myself feel, feel a lot better. And that was, well, go to the gym, lose the weight. And it wasn't until, was it 2014 that I did my first ever OCR. And from there, I absolutely loved it. And I, I've got that, I've got my notes here. I'm going to say that I'm going to take a gamble now. Yeah, <laughs> this is my notes arrived. <laughs> um, Tough Mudder Scotland. It was, yes. <laughs> the we last after party. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the one that had the after party was the first one. <laughs> they never take that back. No, it. no. I think rumour is it that in Yorkshire this year, they're going to have the camping and the bar and the hot showers. So they're going to might well be Ooh. an after party. Um, and I know you're like, you, you're probably going to infinity. Are you going to sign up for an infinity in Yorkshire? No, I did the one in April. I think I might get told off if I was to sign up for another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll come to what your infinity result this week. I, I, I mean, you, you, you smashed it, didn't you? You beat me, which is absolutely amazing. You topped, you topped me because I was down there and that. Um, I think you must have flown past me about five times while I was out there walking around. Oh, it was, yeah, it was someone else, that. <laughs> <laughs> so was it Tough Mudder Scotland that, that got you the bug, you know, um, that you, you wanted to do better? What, what happened then? So I did my first one, Tough Murder Scotland, and then I kind of signed up to a few local ones. Um, and then to be honest with you, I actually took a three-year break. Um, I got myself into a bit of a situation, to be honest with you, um, and it resulted in being diagnosed with PTSD. Um, when I had that diagnosis, I knew that I didn't want that diagnosis to define who I was as a person. Um, I didn't want to be that type of person that kind of used it as an excuse. So I knew that my one thing that I loved was OCR. And I knew that if I got back into OCR, that that would really help. And um, so I went back and first year was just for fun. And it wasn't until 2019 that I decided that I would like to, to compete to see where I am um, and it was from there that I made the goal that year to qualify for the OCR world championships I didn't care how good I was going to be <laughs> like I knew I wasn't going to be great at the worlds but uh, the goal was to at least qualify and it wasn't until the very last event that I was able to meet the qualifications needed to be able to to attend the worlds um, again 
I was not great at the Worlds, I'm not going to lie. I think I was like last, but hey, it's fine. It's okay, I made that goal. And yeah, from there, it's it's kind of just been a case of just do what I can, really. Just do the best that I can do. Yeah, yeah. Was was coming out of that three years, um, I guess it would be dark times, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know a few friends who um, suffer from things like that, trying to get yourself right. What, did you see the light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, you've had the two young youngsters to help you through it, you know, um, and that. But did you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Was it? Did you set, or did you just wait? Was it near the end? You just thought, right, I've got to get up and I've got to get something out. Um, at first, I didn't see like at the end of the tunnel. I thought, oh my god, this is going to be who I am. It's uh, this. This is it now. Um, and it wasn't until I actually read was it Aunt Middleton's Fear Bubble book? Yeah. That instantly just changed the whole way that I thought about life. Um, and it wasn't until then that I really pushed myself daily to get up, to get motivated. And even if it was a case of, I really don't feel like I want to go to the gym today, I'd be like, well, why? What is my reason for it? Am I making an excuse? Or do I genuinely feel like I can't do it? And most of the time it was just excuse making. Um, and once I got past all the excuse making, it just it became a lot easier and um, became a lot happier in myself. I started getting my confidence back. And yeah, from there, that's it just kind of got better as, as the time went on. Don't get me wrong. Still to, to this day, you'll you'll have your ups and your downs. It's, mm -hmm. it's never going to be plain sailing. But the most important thing is that you keep going like if you have a bad day don't turn it into like a bad week just have that bad day and come back fresh the following day and keep doing what you keep what you're doing really i, I couldn't agree more and, and you're not the only person that's mentioned Aunt middleton's book to me this week so some of my listeners know that i work in um, a job center and, and things like that and um someone else has said that to me today um well not today i was actually because from wednesday today, it was a monday someone said it to me that they were suffering from lack of motivation and lack of getting up and going out and doing something. And they read Aunt Middleton's book and all of a sudden it was this, is the excuse an excuse or is it that you physically cannot do it? And yeah. you've got to define the difference between them, like you've just said. And if you can define it, you will get up, not all the time, you know, as he were telling me, mm -hmm. not all the time, but he will get up and he will make that effort much more than he ever used to. For sure, like if anyone is going through a dark time, I do highly recommend that they read some of Aunt Middleton's books. I've, I've read every single one and each time his books become more powerful. And yeah, sometimes I even reread them if I feel like I need to. But yeah, his, his books are powerful. Alan's making note now to buy Aunt Middleton's books. <laughs> <laughs> so to, before we went to um, the worlds then, was it? Okay, so you, you, you hit the OCR big time, you know, was it, you did everything, because you've done a who's who of Scotland OCRs, you are, I don't think there's anything that you've not done up in Scotland. I don't think there is actually, I think I've done most of them, um, I'm sure there'll be one, but um, no, so when I made that goal, I did a couple of events, um, I was meant to do Spartan, I think it was the month before, so I actually qualified at Beach Ballistic in the August, then there was a Spartland Scotland in the September, just before the Worlds in October. And I was actually involved in a car crash. And I thought that was the end of me going oh, to the no. Worlds. I actually fractured my collarbone. No. So, yeah, I was absolutely gutted. I was actually on my way back from Gavin Hogarth's um, place, Fit Body Farm. Yeah. Now, Gavin's location was three hours from me at that time. And on my way home, I, I actually had a... A car crash um so yeah so that was a bit devastating I thought oh that's it it's game over so obviously I had to cancel sport in Scotland um but then I was like there's no way I'm letting this interfere with the world so yeah I, I ran the world with uh, probably still had a bit of a fractured collarbone and also managed to tear my rotator cuff and bicep as well at the world oh wow I mean if I look at your athletes for for 2019 before mm -hmm. you, before you end up going there, you were on fire. You know, second female at Rat Race Dirty Weekend. You know, 185th out of a thousand. You know, um, in total, 
that included men. You know, that, that's some pretty good going. You know, you, you were right up there with in the results wise. Um, yeah. It must have been good to, you know, having that accident and then I guess not sort of not ruining the wheels because there's experience and everything mm-hmm. else behind it. But, but how do you then come back after going there and knowing you've not performed? You know, we talked a little about goal setting then about goal mm-hmm. would get out there to come up to come away from from the mental health and from the PTSD. What, what was your goal after that then? Because then it wasn't long since that, that COVID came in it as, was it? No. So after the Worlds, um, I kind of used that as a bit of a learning experience. I was like, right, what do I really need to work on? Um, and then the goal was, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete more Spartan races because I didn't, I hadn't really been involved with Spartan. Um, and then COVID actually hit, which kind of ruined some of it, didn't it? Yeah. Um, but <laughs> just during a COVID, bit. just a little bit. <laughs> Thankfully, we're back. Uh, but yeah, during COVID, I actually made the decision to move from Aberdeen to Cambridge um, to be able to take OCR more seriously. Um, so if anything, <laughs> that shows how dedicated I am to the sport. I just upped and moved 500 miles uh, just after COVID. So yeah, um, and since then, it's just been a case now of learn from the events and my, my goal this year originally was to win the Spartan UK regional series. However, I'll speak about the slight changes later on about that. So, yeah, just now my goal is literally just to, to do the best I can, learn from each race and to come back stronger to eventually join the elites on the start line. Yeah. I mean, 2020 did a lot of um, the Spartan virtuals, didn't you? you know, I did, you were, yes. You were doing a lot of the Spartan virtuals. And winning them, you know, um, winning four out of the six, that, that must have been a big booster for you, that, after coming back from the Worlds. I'll be honest with you, it was quite difficult to kind of accept that placings because they had the different cardio types, didn't they? They had the mm. running, they had the skipping. So I did the skipping because I couldn't leave the twins at home on, on their own. And, and for example, for a beast, doing 21K running with the kids, just let's be realistic here it wasn't going to happen <laughs> um so I took the skipping option for them so I do feel like there should have maybe been different categories like there should have been a runner's category a skipping category or a bike or whatever just feel like it was a little bit unfair um whereas if I had run I think it might have been a different outcome <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest you, you say that but 2021 you know, when ra- when racing came back, you know, you weren't left behind. You weren't left on the start well, line while everyone went off and you know just left you there. You were you were still performing quite well, um, right up there with you know with, with the best runners. Yeah, I would say it, the first Spartan back was definitely the hardest for me. Um, I got news when I attended Marston Lodge, uh, the Midlands one, which was the first one of 2021. Uh, just as I finished putting up my tent, I actually got the news that my dad had passed away unexpectedly. Um, so I ended up actually walking that race because I knew that if he was here, he would have kicked my butt if I didn't perform. Yeah. Um, so I walked that one and I kind of feel like after then, my dad's always been with me and I feel like that last season was kind of dedicated to him yeah i get when you talk about an arm being a bodybuilder and that mm-hmm. and you weren't in sport i guess when you came into sport did, did that put a little bit of a light you know in his eyes a little bit of glint and going oh my my daughter's into into sport and keeping fit now and, and that. it did it did he thought i was absolutely mad for enjoying um, running in mud um, <laughs> but eventually he kind of he, he was really really proud so he would always say to me, "Is like, you dare miss a training session unless you're injured. So like, I knew that if I had came away from that one run, that I, he'd, he would, he would come back and he'd probably, I know it sounds a bit strange, but he'd probably come back and haunt me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to, okay, I cried the whole course. And I think some of the marshals were thinking I was spitting my dummy out because I was coming off all the obstacles in that one. And I'm just walking crying it just looked like I was having a massive tantrum the whole um, course but I am proud that I continued and I crossed that line because I would say out of the whole of last year that um, Midlands medal is probably the most sentimental one to me 
um just that has got a lot of meaning because I could have walked away I could have gone home but I didn't we stayed the whole weekend and we we got through it yeah yeah no I, I get that I get that there's times when you've got to do what you enjoy mm-hmm. to try and overcome overcome something and um I'm going to assume that's what that's what you're doing you were doing something that you enjoy but you didn't want to give you your full heart to it because your dad was there in your background and yeah you to, to move just you know just to get it over and done with as a mark of respect I get all of that and that's and that's great that's that's fantastic that you did that um but when I look at your results for for whatever races and that mm-hmm. there doesn't seem to be so when I look at some people's results I can see oh this person's a sprinter and this person's a you know a bit more ultra runner type you know there's that big gap between it. but I look at yours and there is nothing you know so you know we, we look at sort of Supers and beasts, we've got second and first, late 2020, 21 year age, AG. Um, you know, there is no massive difference. And we, we talked about infinity earlier on. Infinity 45 miles, I think you got. Is that right? 45k, although 45K. it said in my Garmin 52, but because <laughs> the uh, 5k laps were longer than 5k, it was officially 45. But yeah. And, and that was third female as well, if I'm right. Um, it was, yeah. Behind Linda and Kate. So yeah, yeah. you know. Um, that's a great effort. I mean, they're two amazing runners. So where do you put yourself in the spectrum? Are we, you know, is it sprint? So is it 5K or is it the longer distances? I would say it's probably the longer distances for me. Um, I feel like I'm pretty good endurance wise, whereas short distances, I am breathing out my ass. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie on that one. Yeah, the, the, the 5Ks are definitely... A struggle for me but normally as soon as it hits kind of over the the 10 to 15k mark that's where I'm, I'm quite comfortable in that one's cool cool and, and I know you've done a few trail and things like that is it what's your favorite type of tri- type type of terrain then is it is it the mud is it the trail is it the single track I would say it's got to be the trails I just find the trails just so relaxing uh, I just don't feel like I'm running when I'm on, on trails to be fair I think the nicest trail that we've had was uh, Spartan Scotland in 2021. That was such a beautiful route. So m- moving from Scotland to Cambridge then, I bet it was great to find the new trails down that way. Well, there is none. That's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> There's also no hills here. That was just me being a little bit sarcastic there, <laughs> because I'm thinking Cambridge is just, you know, it's just built yeah. up everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, and there's also no hills. Um, so that, that's been a bit difficult trying to get some hill training in, especially for Wales coming up. And yeah, I think the uh, the most elevation you get here is like 40 metres, <laughs> if that. <laughs> so so what, what does your training consist of down there? I mean, you, you've got some great gyms. You've got some great OCR gyms down there. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to assume that you visit a couple of those. I do, yes. It tends to be nuclear. Um, but I also do a lot of CrossFit. Right. as well I do CrossFit four times a week um, and I also I do running as well and then we tend to use the weekends as either like a bouldering weekend or a an, an OCR training weekend so we've been to the likes of PT Bar and Rumble Fitness, Nuclear um, and hopefully we'll be able to get to Obstacle Play Park right. next week hopefully. That, that looks like a good one Obstacle Play Park it's not one I've, I've been to it does. Um, it looks really good. And I've also seen that PT Barn is fairly expanded as well. Like the amount of obstacles they have just now is insane. I, yeah. You know, you, there is so many that you've got so many to choose from, mm-hmm. from down in that area. You know, um, there's also Raw Fit um, down in Hastings, so a little bit further south than you, but I guess only about an hour, an hour and a half drive from you. Yeah, I haven't um, been to Raw Fitness yet. It'd be good to head to, to that one, to be fair. It'd be good to visit them all because this is the whole reason why I moved down here. So I'm neater to them all. <laughs> so you say the only reason that you moved down there, surely there must have been a work element to it as well. We must um, have found it, employment down there. <laughs> it's actually to train to become an OCR coach, funny enough. <laughs> right. Oh, that's, that's um, really interesting. So, yeah, I just need to, to complete a few bits um, with the UK OSF side of things and then hopefully we can become a registered OCR coach wow and, and what's is the plan to do it from I guess where you live or are you going to try and affiliate to a, a specific gym 
So there doesn't actually seem to be anything around this area just now. Um, I do know that, is it the playground is just a way to open up a location in Cambridge? Yeah. Um, so I would ideally, I'm, I'm more, I'm about 30 minutes from the Cambridge city. So ideally, I would actually like to set up something where I am based. Um, if not, affiliate with another gym. Mm. Do, I, I don't know this, because it's not something that's ever come up with me, but do some of the gyms do sort of, what do they call it, when they, is it like franchise it out, franchise coaches out? I know yeah. Nuclear have quite a lot of coaches down there, or there's about, I think there's about three or four down there, aren't they, at Nuclear? Mm -hmm. I know when we talk about PT Barn, you know, we've just got we've just got the one down there, but I know Tony O'Leary helps out sometimes, mm -hmm. and a few others. I don't know about the playground or the obstacle play park. I think they've only got one or two. I think um, obstacle play park is just Mark, if I'm correct. I could right. be wrong. Don't hold me to that. Um, but it's definitely something to speak about with them. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's when it comes to that, I'll obviously send them a couple of messages and, and see what they say. Um, so yeah. We're doing an interview here now. We're going. To... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, listen up! I know you all listen to this. Get in here, but you can. We're going to be. Yeah, we're going to be in big job, demand. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be in demand. You're going to. As soon as this goes out, now you're going to get phone calls. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's the plan, and that's not even why we brought you on. The break. This is news to me. This as well. So we need to give a fair show off about this. Oh, <laughs> Talking about um, th this year and things like that, you know, you touched earlier on that this year's not gone quite quite perfect for you. Do you want to tell us a little bit more why? Uh, yeah, so personally, I feel like I didn't set my goals correctly. Um, I had based all of my goals for this year around position-based goals instead of performance goals. Um, and what I found was, is that when I wasn't placing in those position based goals that I was leaving events feeling really disheartened, I felt like my training wasn't going as well, I felt um, that I was going downhill, and it became a really hard mental battle. So I had been invited along to Rough Runner um, as one of their one of their guests, and I Again, I made a, a position-based goal of coming top three, which didn't happen. So I'd left that event pretty disheartened and, and gutted. And then Spartan came along and the goal there was, again, to be in the top three for each race. And um, even though I picked up an injury on the beast, again, totally disheartened and I'll be honest with you, I felt like I just totally, I just wanted to give up OCR altogether. I felt like I wasn't performing right. Um, I, I found myself getting to the point where I was almost crying daily. I was having really down uh, down moments and in, in questioning whether I even wanted to continue with, with the training, with OCR, with even like if I actually wanted to become a coach in the sport. And yeah, it, it wasn't until I really took some time out to... I actually spoke with Sean from from Team Grit. He had a, he was actually having a yeah, conversation with the twins. He was doing a coaching call with them, and he said to the twins that because uh, they were they were starting to to follow me and say, oh, but I want to come top three in, in the kids race. And then they were doing the exact same, getting really disheartened and upset because they weren't then hitting top three. Um, and Sean had said to them, look, guys, look, you need to to not put goals into place that are, are position based and, and focus more on performance based goals and when I heard Sean say that I took um, I took some time out to really think about that and you know somebody was so right so I changed all my goals from from the position based ones of coming top three in all Spartan races and winning the the UK regional series um award for age category and I changed them to performance based ones so I put this into practice for, for nuclear that happened a couple of weeks ago. And it's the first time I have enjoyed a race in forever. Um, I was meant to be doing the comp competitive wave and I, I actually dropped out of it, to be fair. But when I thought about it, I thought there's no point in me being in, in, in that wave because I'm, I'm not going to the world championships this year. So, so what is the point of me qu qualifying if, I, if I'm not going? 
So I thought, right, what I'm going to do is I'll drop out and I'll go and run the open wave and run my own race. Um, and again, I, the, the, there was no pressure on my shoulders. It's the first time that I've gone into a race, just no pressure of people expecting these results or expecting you to hit the top three. And it wasn't until I finished that race that I realized that not only had I felt really strong in my running. I'd also completed two obstacles that I was previously unable to complete. And I also got over my fear of dragons back. Now that has been a fear since the world. Um, and I, I was over the moon with that performance. And then turns out I actually ended up placing second in age anyway. <laughs> um, but the, the, it was just so nice just having no pressure. Because I feel like, before it there was everyone kind of expected you to hit a certain position as well and you were instantly going into a race really stressed um, and you weren't being able to enjoy it so it wasn't like and because of all the pressure and that that you were under you were never able to see the positives in a race like I, I could have gone and ran say they knocked maybe what say five minutes off my previous time but because I hadn't hit that position-based goal, I wouldn't even consider looking at that achievement of, oh, I've knocked five minutes off my time. So since since changing changing my goals in that, I've I've really started to feel a lot better mentally and also feeling stronger as well and not getting in my head of, oh, I'm not good enough anymore. Right. Is, so the, the plan now, I mean, first of all, I'm asking, which two obstacles did you did you complete that you've never done before? So it was the one in the, the world, right? It's got that horrible orange balls and it's all upper body with oh, the rope. I hate that one. I yeah, absolutely I hate that. I finally got over it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, what was the other one? Um, oh, God, now it's gone out of my head. There was another one. Oh, the monkey bars, how it then went on to, like, the slanted ones as well. So it was... They had it at the Challenge Cup in November 2021. It was like the monkey bars onto like a cage kind of monkey bar. Yeah, I haven't done yeah. that one yet. I haven't yeah. done that one yet. So we got across that one as well. And then <laughs> we finally, first time since 2019, we got across Dragon's Back without going into a full-on panic attack. <laughs> so but thanks to the What is it about Dragon's Back? What is it about Dragon's Back? Is it the fear of falling down the gap or...? I think it's the fear of falling down the gap, but also at the world, I've seen two people knock their teeth out and I've seen another one break their ribs. So it was probably best not to watch that obstacle at the world because if I hadn't of, I don't think I would have had that fear. But yeah, and the one at nuclear is you look down, it's quite a long way to fall if there's there's no mats. No, no, there isn't. I, I, I'm not so bad on that one. The one that fears me is, is, is it's a very similar one. It's the leap of faith one. So at Judgment Day that they had um, uh, down, I think it was um, Border Moor, which was the old army military base, they had a leap of faith there and you went, you went onto like, a, it was literally a plank and then you jumped from one plank to the other. Um, okay. And, and that one was, all, because, but there was nothing at the side, the plank was very narrow, so you wasn't really jumping into a lot of space. And there's one at Nuclear, have you, not Nuclear, at Nuts, have you done Nuts Challenge yet? I haven't. I've, I need to uh, get onto nuts, but every time they've they've launched their dates, it's a date that I can't make. <laughs> You're lucky. Stay at that. Keep on praying for that. Uh, they have one there, which is right next to the Nutcracker, and they have a leap of faith there, and you're jumping from, and you're quite high up, so it is, I think it's about a three metre drop if you missed. The gap's only about a metre wide, mm -hmm. but it, it is, you know, when you look down, you're thinking, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to fall down there. <laughs> Sometimes you say to yourself, don't look down, but then what do you do? You look down. <laughs> yeah, you do. And, and I used to be the same with that, because I, I've got, I do suffer from vertigo, which is, but it's quite strange, my my suffering from vertigo, is that um, if you put a rope on me, I'll go rock climbing, yeah? I've abseiled out of helicopters. I can go up in an aeroplane. I can do anything as long as I'm attached to something or inside something. You asked me to climb up, um, a little rock, so I go a lot of fell running, climb up a little rock on top of a fell, and I'll only be two metres high, and I start to shake, and I start to shiver, and I've got to, like, hold on, I've got to bend down and hold on to all four things, 
I just hate the being being high. Yeah. Um, it's really weird my vertigo. Yeah, I can't say that heights is an issue as long as long as there's maybe a mat or water or or something. But I think it's because I've got my my ankles aren't the strongest, and I've got a fear of breaking my ankles. <laughs> oh yeah. Because then oh. it's like, then what do I do? I'm five hundred miles from home from any family. Like if something goes wrong, what do I do? Yeah. Oh, that, that must be. I guess yeah, you're right. I, but it is the fear of hurting ourselves, isn't it? Whatever we do, it's always. And, I, and that's one of the things I like about OCR. It's not like, oh gosh, I could hurt myself on this. You know, um, I've learned not to hurt myself. You know, I know mm. how to land and roll, and I know how to do monkey bars and things like that. But there is that fear, isn't there? Of always and that little bit of adrenaline of. of yeah, for going sure. I think yeah. it's with with having the twins because if something goes wrong to me. What happens to them yeah oh yeah that's you know and that's the other thing into you know being a parent that you know you're the one that that they're looking up to you're the one that's controlling them and um, and exactly. their life and molding their life and you want them to have the best and you need to be here to let them have the best yeah exactly especially when we've got no family or, or that around for for any support it'd yeah. be a bit it'd be a bit of a difficult one I don't <laughs> think my mum would be too too impressed if I asked her to take time off of her work to come and help me out. <laughs> so, yeah. Mum, travel down here and help me out. <laughs> yeah, she would. She would not be happy with that. <laughs> well, before going to ask you about the thing, what, what was that like leaving that support network when you moved down to Cambridge? Because I know when I got youngsters and that, you know, and and I was with with my partner at the time, um, it was quite easy to be able to grab a night out and say, you know, hey, Mum, or we had mother-in-law whichever it was you know, have kids for you know for an evening um or if there was something like school had, had broken up you know in school holidays it was easy for them to have them you moved down there with that with no support network yeah you know, that must be a huge shock for you um it wasn't it wasn't to be fair um I've always it's always just been me and the boys really so when I moved down here it was kind of like right okay like We'll do everything together because really the only time that I would have some form of support was if I was doing OCR races. Whereas now that the twins have got involved with it, they've got to be there anyway. So it wasn't really much difference. And I'm not one, I don't go on night outs or anything. Like if my mom had the twins, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'll just go to the gym or do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it wasn't like, it wasn't a huge shock to the system. I'd say the only thing that I have struggled with is if, um, if like the school phones and, and one of them is like unwell or something and, and I'm not nearby to, to go and pick them up instantly. Um, that's, that's really been the only thing that I've, I've struggled with. But apart from that, that's been it really. Oh, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. <laughs> so quickly going back, look, look, take a step back now to where you talk about your goals and you were setting your goals and yep. that. Um, Cause we just di digressed a little bit then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> When you do you think going forward when you race, you're now gonna look at the positives in terms of performance rather than position. And, and are you gonna and will you analyze your race more or did you analyze them before or was it just you focused on that position? I was so focused on a position before that I didn't actually think about the race. Um what I did last year was like everybody would ask me just before the race, like leading up to it, like, oh, are you ready for the race? And I would always say, Don't don't speak about it. I'll deal with it when I get on the start line. Um, but then the more that I hit podium, the more that I found people were expecting that. So it became quite a stress. Um, whereas at the start of this season, I wasn't even analysing my races. It was a case of you have to get that top spot. And if you don't, you might as well go home. Uh, whereas now it's all going to be on performance based only. If I hit the podium perfect that's an added bonus but if I don't you know what it's fine as long as I come off that finishing line and know that I have ran well and I have tried my hardest to the best that I can do then that's all that's going to matter take take the positives we were talking about um mm -hmm. Anthony Middleton earlier on that's what he'd be saying look at the positives take the positives out of out of everything the the, the three months we've had where you, you're sort of focused on that mm -hmm. Are you like that in, in life in general? Are you focused about sort of what the, what the outcome in life is or do you take the positives in life? In life, I take the positives in life. I, I've never fully, I'm quite a positive person. I felt like 
I was losing myself because I wasn't looking at the positive side when it came to racing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it became it became really quite difficult. And like I say, as soon as I didn't take the positives in, it made it so unenjoyable. Yeah. It got to a point that even turning up to the races was I was just dreading it and thought, oh, here we go again. And it was, and OCR is meant to be about having fun, isn't it? That's what we're there for. We're there to have fun and this and that. So to put so much pressure on yourself is just, now that I look at it, it was it was really silly of me to do, but we live and we learn. Because if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have learned from it. No, no. And, and I guess when you're at that level that you are, um, you know, there is going to be, I guess, peer pressure from the outside. Because like you said, you know, people were saying, are you ready for the race? You know, but really what they're saying to you is, where are you going to finish? Yeah, that, that, that's what you you listen to. I know when I used to race, and people said, "Are you ready for a race at weekend?" I know they weren't asking me, "Am I ready?" They think, "How well do you think you're going to be? How well do you think you're going to do?" And that and that's what you do get as well. Like there was like a couple of messages that would be like, "I'll look forward to seeing the photo of you on on the top on the podium or on the get mm-hmm. taking home gold." And it just it, it was just added pressure, wasn't it? So now, leading up to races, I'm not going to bother viewing any messages on social media I'll deal with them afterwards just because it, it is it's amazing how it affects you like I could feel myself getting I, I started feeling like I was getting anxiety attacks before I was going on to the the, the start line like shame Jesse um sporting pro Jesse she she had to deal with me having a bubbly moment at London and <laughs> and then I think Katie Joyce as well did I was just I just couldn't stop crying it was just so much pressure whereas now I feel like Okay, I'm. I'm probably not. Let's face it. I'm. I'm not ready for the hills. There's no hills here to train on. So, so Wales is going to be interesting. Um, but I'm excited to go and enjoy it. And I already have a goal set for for Wales as well that I'm. I'm super excited to attempt to achieve. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. I, I mean, I like the fact that you know you. We've got this. This is one of the reasons why I got into OCR, and you just touched on it just there that there's a community in OCR, you know, and, and when you're having a wobbly or, or, mm-hmm. or even just turning up and just seeing people, everyone means well, you know. Oh, and, for and I sure. Say that, yeah. You know, I mean, Kate is, you know, I speak to Katie a bit and she, she's really, she's one of the nicest people in OCI. And Katie she Joyce is. Is, is right up there. In and one. Libby as well. Like, she, yeah. hats off to Libby. Like, she supports the twins. Like, she has words with them as well because they had a bit of a wobble at Spartan. And Libby was straight up there being like, it's okay. Like, let's focus on the positives. Like, it's all good. We've learned from it. Like, she's brilliant as well, little Libby. <laughs> built-in babysitter there <laughs> yeah she knows something. she's honestly lovely beauty bitch she's she's a good one <laughs> and earlier on you touched a little bit on crossfit and i, I want to ask the dreaded question you know okay. because it's a big thing going on at a minute you know we, we've just had the world champs you know and i'm trying not to say it because you know i'm we've got his own podcast that's, that's related to it but High rocks. <laughs> I mean, is this something that you, you're looking at? Because you know, <laughs> you are you are into CrossFit. You know, when, when I look at a lot of athletes in OCR, you, you remind me very much of um, of Jay Skillam. You know, okay. in terms of your build, and this is a compliment. This, you know, this is mm-hmm. a compliment. You you you're, you're physically strong um, and probably a lot stronger than a lot of of the runners out there, um, which would mean that you would. You know, it would be very easy. Like Jade has quite has quite quickly transferred into the high rocks world. Please tell me you're not. Are you going to give it a try? You know, what what are you thinking? What's your thoughts? You know, and, and this is a scoop. This because we've not even talked about this area, <laughs> we? so. So I I did the virtual version of high rocks uh, during lockdown, and I got through to the UK based semi finals. And the uh, <laughs> the lockdown version has put me off of doing high rocks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it has. Well, I, I highly doubt you'll see me at a high rocks event. Um, it's yeah, I I don't think it's me. I love to chuck around at CrossFit. I like heavyweights. Right. I like all the like technical moves, like your cleaning jerks and stuff like that. That high rocks doesn't have. So for me, I've not considered actually doing high rocks. Oh, now I hope I put my foot in it now and, and I hope you are going to consider it. Alan, to <laughs> no, <head. laughs> no, I've been quite strong about it. I would happily help out for the day. 
bit. You you won't see me running one. <laughs> um, right, let's go back to Scotland then. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to Scotland because I want to know all because uh, I've done a few up in Scotland. So let's let's see what we've done. So I've done it tough. Yep. Yep. So we're gonna hit Uzi. Um, I've done. I haven't done beach ballistics. I know you've done beach ballistics, but I haven't. I have. I've been up there. Yep. I've done Titan Warrior when it was a no CR. Have we done it as an OCR or was it just trail? They, uh, no, when they uh, did it as OCR, they're no longer doing it anymore. No, no, they're not. Um, what was it? Uh, was it the Beast of Ballam? Ballam? Oh. Bankery, the Bankery Beast. That's the one, yeah. I've done that one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, right. So that's that's me. That's me done up in Scotland. Oh, no. I, I, Black Attack? I haven't done Black Attack, no. That's on the border, though, isn't it? That, we've got to claim that in the U. In England's got to claim Glack Attack, or is it over no, the No, Glack Attack is actually based in Aberdeenshire, um, but they have stopped doing it as an OCR now in a trail run only. Oh, oh I'm thinking Gelt Gladiators this Gelt side. Gladiators, yes. That's, yeah, that's, I haven't done that one, actually. Oh, I that, got well, asked to do it. That's in England, isn't it? So that doesn't count. <laughs> um, well, t- Total Worry, did you Total Worry? I when did, I did that one, yep. Um, I've also done well. Spartan, obviously. Spartan. Uh, tough mudder. You've done tough mudder. We talked about tough mudder. Yep. Um, so that's about it. No, I, mean, I can't think of any. I think more. that's it because Scotland didn't have a lot. Deer, Mighty deer stalker. I haven't done that one. Oh, I'm one one up. That's one to me. <laughs> Point to Alan on this one. <laughs> no, that's one I haven't done. So there's only one left of Mighty Deerstalker next year. They're calling this the last one for Mighty Deerstalker. Will we will we see a return to Scotland for that? Or? So what you say is that a hint? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I can look into it if it's the final one. Then you, you've done every other one. You've done. You have Probably. literally done every other one in Scotland. You know. It's the last one. Then I kind of got no option but to. <laughs> we will speak to that race and see if we can get an invite for you because you are you are the um, you know the, the the princess of Scotland. We're going to call you Princess of Scotland. We're not going to call you Queen because you're not old enough. Princess of Scotland. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll look into it. Why not? Cool. Um, and I've only got one other question. Then we, we talk about whatever you want. But um, CBD organics. How did you get involved with that? So I have raced with Michelle, who owns CBD uh, Leaf Organics, and uh, I was suffering, obviously, from anxiety and whatnot before as well. Um, And I had reached out to her when I realised that she was the owner of uh, Leaf Organics CBD. And I said to her that I was kind of, I was looking, I was wanting to, to start CBD, but you don't really know how to if that makes sense you've got a lot of questions do you like yeah. my main question was if i take this stuff am i going to end up high that was, that was what mine. i thought that was me i, I was on yeah. the phone to her I'm, I'm not gonna get high am i yeah so i was like am i gonna get high is this something that i could get addicted to like if i was to come off of it am i going to have like withdrawal symptoms and whatever and she was brilliant and um, so i started taking it and eventually like within a couple of weeks well I would say the couple, first couple of weeks was like, I noticed like small changes, but then after it really got into my, uh, into my, my system, I noticed like huge difference in terms of recovery, my sleep, like my mental health as well. Um, it seemed to have been a lot better. And uh, yeah, I even noticed as well that my skin started getting, uh, getting better as well. Um, so yeah. And that I just kind of went from there and I actually said to Michelle, this is, are you guys like looking for anyone out of curiosity because like i i don't take on roles unless it's a product that i use myself and that i truly believe in yeah. and uh when she says that yeah she she would love to have me on her team and, and that i was i was straight onto it because again it, it's a great great product and michelle is great at answering any of your questions like she's so clued up on it as well um yeah yeah it, it's great so. And I'm like you. I mean, I I love it for the recovery side of things. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm I'm twice your age now, but you know, um, when I sort of started getting injuries and and things like, I was really struggling to recover. So I'd go out and I'd run a 15, 16 miler, and then I was having three days to recover before yeah. I got to go out and run a five k again. Um, so I, when I started taking it, I was I, I was like a bit skeptical, like you. I was mm-hmm. saying, look, I don't want to get high you know I, I do 
because of my job, you know, there's potential there for drug tests and, yep. and things like that. And I was like, so I've got to be like really squeaky clean. So we agreed on, she really, really helped me out. She was like, no, you know, the one you're taking, um, it, it won't, you know, it's not, um, it's not going to throw a positive up mm-hmm. um, because it's, it's non, it's kind of, is it t- something to do with tea? She, she does tell me about it every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, She's- but there's element in it that it doesn't have that in there. So it doesn't, it doesn't throw up a, um, a positive test result because it's not not got the the drug side of it you don't yeah. get addicted um you take it as much as you want you know there's, there's no prescription for her either she turns no. around and says look you know she you you take it to how you feel right and i've gradually i've, I've weaned right down on it you know mm-hmm. when i first started taking it the recovery was really well but I, used, I started to sleep better and i thought i wonder if the sleep helped me a lot because they'll talk about sleep mm-hmm. helps you helps you recover um, but yeah, I was. I found very, very quickly I can now go and run back to back fifteen miles and yeah. you know, without recovery. And it's and amazing it what it does. It really is. Like I had, uh, I've got a couple of people on it that suffered from either tennis elbow or arthritis, and to a point where they were really suffering and and having to get steroid injections, and they were getting all sorts of painkillers, etc., from the doctors. And I've recommended them to Michelle. And since they've been on it, they've came off of steroids. They're off of all their painkillers from the doctors and everything as well. So it is, it's, it is great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, like I say, it's absolutely, you know, um, amazing stuff. And mm. um, cool. Oh, I mean, we've, we've, we've gone over so much. I can't believe how much we've gone over in such a short period of time. You seem to flow in this, this one. I guess it always does when you're having a chat and a good conversation, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, uh, do you want to give a shout out to any any other sponsors that you use? I mean, we, we touched on CBD Leaf because I use them as well, but is there anyone else that you want to give a shout out to? Um, I would say, so I've got another two. So we've got SOS Hydration UK. Um, they, again, they're great. I use them daily. Their, their products are great, especially their, for electrolytes and that. And I'm also with... OCR Trail Sportswear, which is a company based in Canada that has just started up their their, their sports gear. So yeah, it's, it's been exciting this year with all these different things coming on. But shout out I, to I them. need to know about the gear. I need to know about the gear because I am a gear freak. You know, anyone it looks great. Me. I actually have a giveaway just now on my Instagram page. If you haven't seen it, that you what? could be in the chance of winning one of their performance tops. Oh, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> I'm, I'm on there as we speak. Stay on it. Yeah, they, their gear looks absolutely amazing. And again, if anyone's wanting any discount codes, it's all in. It's on my LinkedIn on Instagram. You can grab yourself some discounts. And what? And what are the supply? We're talking shirts, shorts. So socks, shirts, shorts, um, compression leggings for females. I think they've got some male ones as well. T-shirts. Uh, they've also got caps beanies uh headbands as well so they've got quite a lot of different stuff and obviously we're looking at getting more out oh i'm i've got, I've got to check this out now I, I love new kit i'm i am a kit freak like i say i've got 13 14 pairs of shorts you know 30 40 oh, really? tops <laughs> and this is not tops we it, talk it's from. really good quality as well which is a huge like yeah. that is really important when you're in ocr because you know what like when your kit gets wrecked pretty quickly, but they, their kit is is quite high quality and, and it's been spot on. Wow. And what about SOS hydration? Um, what, what, what is theirs? Are we talking gels? Electrolytes. Are we talking electrolytes? Electrolytes, yeah. So they, they, it's just a powder. You pop it in. You've got many different flavours. So you've got your, your lemon, um, mango, citrus, blue... No, it's not blueberry. Raspberry, if I'm correct. Keep forgetting all of them. Coconut. <laughs> um, they also do them for kids as well. Uh, they've got, got little kiddie ones. It's in, I'm pretty sure it's Paw Patrol. Right. Um, and yeah, this, basically the SOS is as, as effective as a, as a drip that you would get in the hospital for keeping you hydrated. So you can use it not just for sports. It's great for illness as well. Um, if you're traveling, you know what, like you travel, you yep. tend not to drink a lot. Um, and even just for the hot weather as well, you just literally either get sachets or like a tub with a, a scoop and you literally just put one of them in your drink and that's you, you're good to go. Awesome, awesome. What other kit do you wear? Let's go, let's go. Okay, what other kit do we wear? So let's go watch first. See, you, I keep seeing this watch, this nice little blue watch that you've got on. What, so, we've, watch? so we've got the Garmin. 
Um, oh, now you're asking me. Um, Phoenix? Is it the Vivo? Oh, Vivo. V- oh, no, it's not. I got a new one. It's the Venue. Is it the Venue? Venue 3? No, I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not a big gaming fan. I don't. It looks it nice, is. though. I like it. It is. Like it's quite it. nice. The other one was yeah. smashed to pieces. So I, I asked <laughs> a new one. See how long this one lasts. <laughs> and shoe wise, I'm, I'm a shoe geek as well. So I wear the Innovate X Trilon, is it? X Talon. Talon, that's it, the X Talon, yeah. That's what I wear. The the ones that with narrow last, the quite narrow last, is it 265 or is it I think it's ones? the two six no, it's the two six fives I've currently got, but I do think I need to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any potential um, sponsors out there yeah so if anyone well. wants to give me some trainers <laughs> i'm over here so, we, so we're looking for jobs and sponsors all right. job sponsors <laughs> maybe a babysitter once in a while oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. any races so what races are we going to next and we'll try and get babysitters for the next one what races are we going to next I think we're at most of them to be fair <laughs> to be fair when they're at spartan i never see them they end up they just leave me i think it's spartan's really really good for that because they're into a lot of places that can get lost at any and i think it's the same at tough oh. Mudder, you know that as long as they don't leave that village there's no way they can really get lost and yeah exactly and yeah they, they are really good um the, the kids they seem to just support everyone to be fair the amount of messages that i've had come through from from other parents or even athletes themselves saying oh say thank you to jane aston they were cheering me on or they ran alongside my child and made sure that they were safe and so it's really nice to hear that even though i'm out racing that they're still being really good and also um helping fellow teammates and that as well which is super cute and, and which one's the eldest? So I know the twins, but one's older than the other. Which one's the eldest? So Aston is the oldest um, by a minute, oh. literally a minute. So I've been saying Jay and Aston, and I should have switched it the other way around. It should be Aston and Jay because he's the older one. Well, to be fair, I call him Jay and Aston as well. <laughs> Jay always says I should be the big brother because I'm taller. All right. <laughs> we always have this debate of yes but i should be the big brother because i'm taller and then aston says no well i was born first and jay seems to say that well doesn't matter who was born first i'm bigger <laughs> are, are they as, as thick as thieves i know a lot of a lot of twins tend to be as thick as these they tend oh, to be yes. but then they're also like so strong together and yeah they they are they they stand up for each other um they argue like nothing in earth they have actual fist fights um it's got to a point now i just leave them to it because there's no point me getting involved but they're also total opposites right as in likes dislikes their personality they're chalk and cheese just so different wow wow and to be a minute apart, you wouldn't expect that, you know, yeah. you know the same parents and, and that you'd expect very, very similar. And, yeah, no, and one's that. very, Aston, he loves to have his bedroom spotless and everything needs to be nice and neat and tidy, whereas Jay's room, you just might as well shut the door and just don't even look. Um, <laughs> same with their style as well. Like Aston's all about the sports gear, whereas Jay's all about jeans and vans and like skateboarding. So it, it's, they're so different. But they both love OCR, which is is great. That that's that's the handy part. At least they both yeah. love OCR. <laughs> oh, Naomi, it's been a pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you for joining me. Thank um, you for having me. Well, I hope you like listening to that. Um, what a great story! I moved down to Cambridge. Don't forget, if you know anyone, any gym down there or and down south that needs a, a you know a coach, he's going to be a UKOSF um, approved obstacle course racing coach um, in the near future. So. Um, Give her a bell, you know. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Um, yeah, what a girl, you know. Um, wish her all the best. And I like how she's setting goals. I'm going to take that um, into my to my next plans. Don't think about the position. Think about the experience. That's a great way of looking into things, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that's me. Um, thanks for listening. Yeah, I'm not going to. Guys, you're amazing. I, I love how our audience grows week on week. Really, really, really thank you for listening. Um, 
Coming up, don't forget we've got UKHXR, which is everything IROX, and I believe this week we've got um, three people on with Ian talking about Las Vegas. So at the World Champs, I think it's Tom and Dina Rogan and Jay Muscat coming on. Um, yeah, I can't wait to listen to that myself. Well, I'm going to be busy building. I'm going to be setting all... I'm going to be get the podcast on and, and everything else while I'm setting up all the obstacles. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Don't know who Ian's got planned for Swift Half next week. Um, so it's a bit of a surprise for me. I know there's going to be plenty and plenty of um, updates because world is, is changing. O OCR world is changing so fast. You know, with what's going off with the Olympics and, you know, the fifth discipline in the pentathlon, Tough Mudder, Spartan, Nuclear, everyone's, like, ramping up. Um, and hopefully, you know, um, Ian might mention Overload, but, you know, you never know. I'm not going to tell him to. Um, he'll mention Spam Yard Jam coming up this week. Um, and if you're there, um, I hope to see you. Come and say hello. Tell me you listen to a podcast. I love it when people come up to me and say, I'll listen to your podcast or drop us a message, which reminds me. If you haven't left us a review recently, please do. Um, give us five stars. Give us four stars, three stars, two stars. I, I, you know, your choice. If you like us, give us it. If you don't, you don't. Um, but leave us a review. It's really, really appreciated. Spotify reviews, um, Apple reviews, Deezer reviews, every, whatever platform you're on, just leave a review. These algorithms absolutely help us. Um, and we're growing. We Yeah, we're growing. Um, thanks to everyone who's involved with us. Thanks to you for listening. Now, you take care, you stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Love you. Bye. I don't know what you want. Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall. My love, if you feel like I do right now, don't say you're on the run to the other side. My love. But you never do